Hi, all. Kinsey here with the Today for Daily podcast and um, classic. I go live and then this system tells me that I have a terrible internet connection. I do not know what that's about, <laughs> but I'm with my girlfriend, Emily. You are very familiar with her uh, on this platform. Emily, um, it's been a wild year for the royal <laughs> family. Um I can't remember. Did we expect it to be as chaotic as it has been in 2023? I feel like you said that there were going to definite, there was, you definitely used the word roller coaster at some point, but mm -hmm. did we anticipate <clears throat> the absolute chaos that happened really over the last few weeks? I mean, I, I pretty much, I think I said, yeah, strap up, strap in, <laughs> yeah. buckle up. <clears throat> that there, it was going to be pretty chaotic and up and down. Now, when it comes to Harry and Meghan, everybody keeps asking me about the story that makes m my head hurt. My eyes roll so far back into my head. The, this, um, it's this Us Weekly cover that says 2024, Harry and Meghan's redemption year. Actually, I have the I have word for word what it says. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to pull it up really quickly because I want to read for you what sure. Us Weekly wrote. Um, let's see. Let's see. Okay, so here's what Us Weekly wrote. After a rough year of public backlash, the royal couple are on the rebound inside their future plans and why they're moving on from family squabbles. It says in 2023, they were labeled losers and grifters, but now Meghan Markle and Prince Harry are fielding offers left and right, <laughs> which made me laugh so hard, Emily, because two weeks ago, the Hollywood <laughs> Reporter called them, you know, the, some one of the biggest losers in Hollywood. But Two weeks later, they're fielding offers left and right. Um, the magazine says, find out what's in store for them in 2024 from books to movies and more, plus where they really stand with the royal family. Us, that just sounds like an Us Weekly puff piece. Somebody from their team called Us Weekly and said, we'll give you a few tidbits if you'll, if you will make this your cover story and, and try to change the narrative what's your opinion on that i mean everyone literally every other publication is saying worst year ever how can they survive and in comes us weekly to be like no everything's cool um <laughs> so it's actually a mix of both i wouldn't say it's a redemption year by any means i do see the end of this year going into february harry is gonna have some issues there is definitely going to be some heartache. I do see more opportunities. I do see another energy around a book. I do see them trying to bring something to fruition on the big screen. But I see a lot of challenges around these things. And honestly, 2023 was the beginning of the end for them as a couple, I feel. And so their paths are now split. Um, I feel, and I, I've said this before, uh, you know, that they're going to separate in the future, but she's going to be the one that's going to leave. So the energy that I'm feeling around him is that he's actually behind the scenes. I feel like there's more communication with the family and that oh. he is trying to mend things. I also see some energy around Kate and, and William. Um, there's going to be a challenge around Prince William letting go of the past, putting the mm -hmm. past in the past, them focusing on harmony. I really feel that, um, you know, they're, they're not going to want to engage anymore in this drama. And I feel that Megan, things have not gone as she had hoped. And so she's going to want to shed everything that has happened with the royal family. And I, I see her leaving. And he, over the next two years, is going to try to do everything to repair with the family and also to keep his foundation with her. And it's it's not going to work. Oh, my gosh. I, I mean, I, I, I can't say I'm surprised. So let's go back to, um, if you don't mind, what you said about about Harry. So you're saying professionally, there might be some pops professionally. Yeah. There might be some opportunities that come up, but personally behind the scenes, there are going to be some struggles. And then you said they start to separate and it, and you, I, I believe when you said they start to separate, 
you you're talking personally, but professionally, we've already seen people, we've already seen them start to separate. Megan going on the red carpet by herself. Um, mm -hmm. Harry going to Invictus, of, uh, you know, originally by himself, Megan meeting him there shortly, shortly afterwards, and then the huge show they put on at Invictus in Germany. Um, so you think that the profession, I'm not, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth. So do you believe that Megan going the her, an independent route professionally is her trying to uh, start to build this stability, to build this, um, to build, a, you know, her own kind of, I don't know, backup plan? Yeah, so she's going to try to revamp herself. I, I just see her like slowly starting to move away from Harry. I, I also feel that she feels that he's weak. So there is some energy of him almost desperate around her leaving. I mean, the marriage is, is very difficult. You're going to see it get rockier. It's, it's not happy and it's not light. And she is at a crossroads. She's going to have her hands in many different pots. Um, I, I think I mentioned it before, but I can't remember. You know, she sees herself as the next Oprah in the sense of creating and building a conglomerate. So having her hands in all of these, these different things. And that is what her focus is. She is going to want to shed all of this backlash and drama with, with the family and with Harry. She, she doesn't want it anymore, but it's not going to be a quick separation. It's going to be over a period of time. And yes, projects are in the works. There are some things that will hit, some that won't. But I feel that she is so stressed out physically that it's showing up like in her physical body. And she's at a crossroads as to where she's going with the relationship and with her vision um, um, career-wise in the future. I, I just don't get like um, a couple that's, that's you know, on the same team essentially anymore. Um, and he has a lot of interest to try to repair things with the family. I think he sees the writing on the wall, but he doesn't want to accept it. Ooh. So he's going to keep trying. And so the next two years, you know, he's going to keep trying to keep his family together on the personal level and then also trying to repair with Kate and William um, and the royal family as a whole. Um, and I, I do feel that there is going to come a time where Kate and, and William will will allow him back in on some level. I think that Kate really just wants harmony. She wants harmony and she doesn't want anything to do with the drama. Well, so this, that's I feel like this keeps keeps William up at night. I picked that up from him. Oh, that's so sad. I hate I hate to think about that. It's interesting that you say Kate, that Kate's gonna be this person because I have had a couple of people ask me that recently. And I thought there's no way that she's in this forgiving place mentally after the Omid Scobie book leak. Um, but maybe she is just that mature it's, and maybe she does see the bigger picture. It's not about forgiveness with her though. Okay. It's, it's moving forward for the good of the family and of the people is what I see. They, she doesn't want to live in that space. It's not good for their energy and she is very mature. So her focus is peace all around just in their life. Um, and William will be letting go of the past. Um, and, and I feel like there's also a lot of energy around him too that is focused on money and, and on, on the people in general, like taking care of people. And Kate is also going to be stepping into some more heart centered things she's actually turning a new leaf in her energy. So she's entering a new cycle and she's going to want to keep displaying harmony. So she's going to move towards things that have more meaningful purpose for her in her life. It's more about that things that she really stands for versus engaging in this childish drama. So I, I don't see it as what, what has happened has happened, but it's not, it's not an energy of, oh, I, I forgive you. Like she's deeply hurt, but I think that she is going to take the more mature route. So when you, so you're- um, Now this is separate from Megan though, okay? This is just Harry. <laughs> yes. That's, inter that's funny that you say that because I've, 
I've had a, a couple of other people say that too. Things will be okay with Harry. Things will never be okay with Megan. When it comes exactly. to Megan, the energy you're talking about, um, you know, Kate being so focused on these initiatives, you've you've said before she just doesn't have time, and you've always said it better than than a, the way I'm about to ex, um, to repeat it. But you've always just said she doesn't have time for BS. She's an adult. She's a grown up. She navigates the world differently. Is that drama and the pettiness and the what you just said about about Catherine? Is did did William and Catherine feel that on the horizon? with Megan? And is that why they did not want Harry to go there? Absolutely. They, they saw it a mile away. They knew that it was going to be bad. I actually feel I, I, Kate uh, is very intuitive, but I feel that William is even more intuitive. And wow. I feel that he, he knew it was, it was going to be a chaotic um, situation. But here's the thing that I see with their energies. You've got two people who represent as more adult, mature energies. And it's almost like you have to let your child go out and be free and discover and rebel. And it's that kind of energy that, you know, William has with, with Harry. Mm. And it's like the parent saying, oh, no, don't do this. It's going to be a mistake. But then the child does it anyway. Right. I, I, I think it was Tom Bauer's book that said that Diana's brother, mm -hmm. Earl Spencer, actually told Harry at least three times, please reconsider before he actually got married. So there was a lot of debate and discussion around that. Local Hero Cycling, thank you so much for um, saying hi. I wanted to ask you while you were talking about William, mm -hmm. I had another ch a person in the chat Ask me about William's feelings towards Eugenie, who still has a relationship with Harry and Meghan. Do you believe that William is uncomfortable around Eugenie? Is he resentful of the fact that she you know, has a foot in both worlds? How do you feel um, intuitively about William's relationship with Eugenie? And, and Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everyone in the chat that said that. I do feel that there is a sting in William, there is an energy of a bit of animosity that I don't feel that he lets it show. Mm. Um, I, I feel when when that question was asked, I feel sting, an internal sting. So there is an, an element of feeling a bit betrayed, but at the same time, he's looking at the big picture and he understands. It's does, he, does he act differently towards her? Is he more careful around her? Does he not say certain things around her and yes. her husband? Mm. Yes, the trust the trust is not what it used to be. I feel like there it's very surface. Um, but I again, it, it's more to do with with Megan. It's so that information is not fed or could be used against them. So he's really watching as to who his allies are, and I would say that 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 energy for sure is not. Um, a fully trusted energy at this time. And what about Andrew? Is William, uh, and this is our Sal bringing this up, is William resentful of the fact, because you've had, you've talked a lot about the Epstein stuff privately mm -hmm. on your um, Instagram account. You said a lot of, a lot more information was going to come out. We know January 1st, we're going to get some more details about uh, a lot of these important people that were involved um, with Epstein. And what do you believe William's take on Andrew being around. I mean, even for Christmas time, like it's wild to me that Christmas is that hair, that uh, Andrew's going to be invited to Christmas because I hate to say it, but it's almost guilt by association. Um, perception wise. It's like, it just feels kind of icky that he's around. I still just get that there's an energy of that. They don't want to, they're trying to be fair. There's an energy of trying to be fair. They know exactly what he is. And I feel that they will continue to take certain measures to eventually separate themselves on, on some level. I think things will actually get worse for him. Oh, but Andrew? There's, mm -hmm. But I feel that they're in the future. But I feel that they, I just keep seeing an energy of fairness. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's also, it's, there's an energy of fairness trying to include, but they know exactly what he is. And 
they're trying to manage it as best as they can behind the scenes. I think that they're also very aware of um, more information that's going to be coming out. I actually think that uh, Andrew is in a very bad state mentally. So they could be leaning more towards that energy. it's not just additional information that could come out because that could absolutely come out. But Emily, there are two separate scripted dramas coming out this year, one on Amazon prime and one on Netflix that are going, it's they're scripted. So, you know, it's going to exaggerate. Um, they might go out of their way to be more, a little bit more salacious because they want people talking about it and watching it, but two people, uh, two separate, you know, networks that are going to put a magnifying glass on the one of the worst moments of his life. I can't imagine that. Really quickly, Deandra, thank you so much for saying hi. Um, she loves you on the podcast, Emily. You're uh, we oh, love having hi. you. Here <laughs> um, thank so you. That's, so that's wild to me. I think hear. his mental health is really bad, and they know this. I'm. And that, I'm maybe that's why they're embracing him. Well, I wouldn't say they're embracing. I wouldn't go that far. It's okay. it. This is for <laughs> again. There's they're trying to. I just see an energy of harmony. They had a really chaotic year, and they're trying to just taper any potential things. And I think also there's a feeling around that this is his mess. They. I don't feel that they feel that this reflects upon them um, personally in any way. So. And his mental health is in such a bad place. So I'm I'm not sure that they want to take the risk to have any further damage on their hands. It's like they're they're also in a way protecting themselves. Trust me when I say that. Wow. Ooh. Um, I, I want to go back to because we have a significant amount amount more people in the in the chat now than we did when we first started talking about that Us Weekly article, Harry and Meghan projects in the pipeline. You do mm-hmm. see some projects in the pipeline, you said. Mm-hmm. Do you think that the movie you see might be Meet Me at the Lake, that book that they bought the rights for? And uh, can you, uh, when you say you think that there could be a book, do you think that that's Megan writing a book? If so, do you think she's going to venture back into royal family territory or is she going to try to be a thought leader in some other um, <sighs> part of the world? What are your thoughts on on what Harry and Meghan might venture into or, or Meghan specifically for 2024? I feel like Megan's done with that, with the royal family. Okay. Um, I, I just get a sense of there's going to be some chaos um, in her energy and around them at the end of April going into the summer, I would say June, July. Um, and she is worried about a lot of different things. So I feel like these projects will be more near and dear to her heart. The uh, book that you're talking about, I think that it will be the one that you mentioned. Okay. Um, she may write something, but it does feel like it could be more new thought leader. I, I'm just, I keep getting a flash of Oprah. So whether there was a mentorship there or she sees herself as this big conglomerate, maybe like a mix between Oprah and um, um, the blonde, I can't think of her name right now, uh, Reese Witherspoon. Um, you know, bringing projects to life, like through books. So I wouldn't say that her ideas are original necessarily, but she does see herself as a very prominent businesswoman at this point. I think that she realizes on some level, though she does like to be center of attention with all that Leo energy, she's best behind the scenes on, on some level. So, um, I do feel that if she does write something, it could have to do with maybe her personal um, energy of her growing up um, around how she grew up and how she got to where she is now, that type of thing. Marriage. If anything comes out, yes. If anything comes out about the royal family, though, I, I just feel like she, if she does take one more dig, it would be very stupid of her. But I-, I do. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, I just, I really feel that she, she's at a crossroads. I don't feel like she wants to touch that anymore. I just, I see her going, oh, just get it off me. Mm. It's, you know, she's, she's just, I feel like she's done with it on some level. Is she done with it because she didn't get the results she wanted? Is she done with it yes. because she wanted to play yes. this victimhood card and people turned on her over it? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I the way I saw it was that she it, things did not go as she had hoped or she had planned. And so she wants to shed the energy and she wants to be autonomous. And she now it's like, okay, well, she didn't expand in the way she had hoped um, with, you know, the marriage to, to Harry. And so now she has the, the finances and the funds, but now she wants to become her own woman and do her own thing aside from that. Um, I did have a, a question someone asked me, Crystal asked me if you intuitively you felt like Megan might have been behind, uh, you know, Omid having access to this letter to King Charles that Megan wrote exposing the alleged royal racists. Is, is, intuitively, do you feel like Megan or someone through Megan? Someone gave close Omid to Megan. Someone so close think, to Megan. So you do she, feel like she might have somehow been involved in it. And, and then the crystal she, also asks, does Harry know? And does Harry, is Harry upset over it? Harry doesn't know, but yes, she was involved. She does not necessarily like to get her hands uh, dirty. Like there's always an in-between person I feel. And if she goes directly to someone, it has happened before, but I feel with this specifically, there was someone in between. Ooh. Well, do you think that Prince Harry would what will find out, and might that be what the straw? He's going to find later? everything out later. <laughs> oh. oh my gosh! When you say everything, <laughs> I get chills. What else are we? What else are we working with, Emily? <laughs> um, do you, do you think it happens just, than we know. Let's just say that she's, you know, she's courting other prospects. I've said this lot th earlier this year too. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Cause it was NT that said, Megan doesn't want a millionaire. Megan wants a billionaire. Yes, she does. She's, she's going to move on to bigger and better things. I, 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 there was a whole, this whole year I saw her energy courting prospects. Yes, there were business meetings, but they were more than business meetings. And even though they have created all these PR opportunities where they're like out and happy. And even though some of them were, you know, her by herself and then them together, it's just, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's false. So I see her lining other energies up there. There will be other things that will come out that Harry will find out about. It's like, you know, when you have rose colored glasses off, the glasses come off and then he, he's going to, he's going to be devastated. Mm. And um, Sharon asks the, a, a question that you've kind of approached already, but maybe we'll just discuss it in a different way. Sharon says, will Harry ask to come back to the royal family? Will his wife be invited? Yes. It sounds like you've yeah. said no about the wife being invited. But no. can you expand on, on Harry wanting to come back to the royal family? Uh, so I do feel that he will go back eventually and resume some certain duties and responsibilities, he's gonna take responsibility for what has happened. I, I can't say exactly what that's going to look like. I think it's gonna take time and there's going to be a lot of energy around repairing and, and it, it's like, you know, an energy of maturation and him needing to come back and, and to figure out what his role is then in the family. But she will not be invited back under any circumstances. Wow. That, I mean, I, I do, I have had other people say that to me that they felt like he has, well, you said it first to me, you said it first to me about a year ago that in 2023, you saw Harry starting to really understand the damage he had done. However, things kept happening like Omid's book. And you thought, oh my gosh, if he understood the damage, why are these things still happening? But then you're saying some of this stuff might be happening without his knowledge. Well, you have to think about it like this. If anybody's ever been in a relationship where they have put someone up on a pedestal and they have tried to see all the best things in that person and they have made a commitment to that person and it's like they can't turn back because what they've done is so massive. Think about it like that. Mm -hmm. And he is trying so hard to believe what this person is, is saying to him. There is a touch of delusion. There's a touch of wanting to believe with the rose colored glasses on, you know, you, you take them off for a minute, you get a glimpse and then you go, Oh no, no, no. And then you put them back on. He saw her as an ally. He saw her as, you know, us against them. 
Um, and now he's realizing that she's not even his ally. Oh my goodness. Uh, I did have, but he's still going to fight for it. I will say that he does not, he is terrified that she will leave and she's going to. Oh my goodness. Well, um, I'm, I th I don't know if I have to say allegedly, but I'm just going to throw it out there. <laughs> allegedly. So we don't allegedly, <laughs> allegedly. <laughs> um, uh, so uh, Crystal wants to know if you see Prince George becoming king someday. Now I am privy to this information because I have talked to Emily about this before. Um, and Emily, you, I'll let, I'll, I'll let you say it. I, I don't, I do think some people might be upset by your answer, but I'll let you say it. It's, Will Prince George become king one day? I've talked to Emily about what she sees for William and then going going forward, and it always makes me a little nervous, but I'll let Emily just tell you what she sees in, when it comes to Prince George becoming king one day. Um, so I, I think the family is going to change. So uh, let me let me say this. I feel like um, William will become king sooner than, than we think. And I also feel that there is an energy around George becoming king potentially, but I also feel that it, it may happen also earlier than, than planned as well. I think there are going to be a lot of changes in the future. And I, I've said this before, but the royal family is, it's going to change. They're going to continue to, their, their power is going to wane. The power will be given back to the people on some level. And so the duties may not present um, or have the weight that they do now, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, I had someone ask in the chat earlier. Sorry, I don't, if I, I, I forgot your name. Do you think that Catherine might ever have any more babies? After she had some, she had some difficult pregnancies. I do feel like there could be potentially one more child. But there's free will with this, right? So I see that there's a baby around, but whether or not they choose that will be up to them. But if they did, it, it would be one more only. Oh my gosh, I would lose it for another royal baby, but only theirs. There's the theirs are the only ones that that interest me. Uh, now you don't. I have ha I've seen a couple of questions about death, and I, I and we don't do death mm -hmm. here. Um, what about? Yeah. Um, do you see the king and and queen consort? having successful tours in 2024 mm -hmm. they've got a tight agenda so what is what is jet setting all over the world look like for them or do you feel confident about that or no i i see just the popularity just waning i don't see that he is going to grab people in the way that he had hoped and i feel that she's had some health issues behind the scenes i felt that um at the end of last year um and I think that he's going to end up stepping down in the future. Wow. I, wow. I think that the, what they're hoping to garner, they're not, let me, you know, Diana was magnetic. She just pulled people in. They don't have that. Well, I do think that it's, I'm, I have said a couple of times this year that I'm pleasantly surprised by the amount of support that they do have because in the media world, I, think that once the queen passed away, we were all nervous that there would be some sort of revolt. And it's been the opposite. And I actually think that you could blame Harry and Meghan for a lot of that. People oh, are sure. very sympathetic that in his older age, and when he's finally, you know, he's been waiting all of his life for this job, he's under attack from his own flesh and blood. And so right. I've been pleasantly surprised by the amount of support that they've had since the queen's passing. But at the same time, there is the extreme opposite of people that do buy Harry and Meghan's drama and do go out of the way to make their life more difficult, whether it be protesting, you know, when, when they show up somewhere harassing them in the comments on social media, they've had to turn off some of their comments. Um, but I, I have been, you know, uh, relieved to see that they uh, have, have had so much support globally what can you talk up at all well, about thomas oh go ahead sorry well i was sorry <laughs> what i was going to say is that i mean I, I don't see that you know there's like such an intense hatred that might be felt for harry and megan right like the energy has switched over from one couple to another but i don't feel that the younger people the younger generations are 
they're just kind of like mm, King Charles, yeah. Mm. There, I don't feel that he will be able to garner and pull in the kind of support that they're hoping for where they're so loved like Kate and William are. So I right. think at some point, like that's gonna fade out. Now, is it to the extreme of, of hatred from people? No, but I really feel it's gonna be the younger generations that are like, we just- Which they, you know. they t tend to struggle with, monarchy tend to struggle with that, you know, getting the the younger generations excited about them. It's it's old it's it's old ladies like me <laughs> that love the royal family. <laughs> um, well, and it's going to start getting smaller and smaller. I feel too. I mean, I, I see other people in the future being relieved of duties. So I, I think it's it's all going to really change in the future. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about Thomas Markle? I've had a, I've had the the question asked a couple of different times about Thomas Markle in 2024. Do you have any insight into Meghan's father, how he's coping with the chaos that surrounds his daughter regularly? Um, I feel like know, he has health people? issues. Yeah, do you do you do? I hate to hear that. Yeah. That makes me so I sad. Feel like there's she's done. Yeah, you know? there's a lot of stress. I get like. I get a really deep sadness in him, a lot of stress. I feel like there are things that he does regret, um, but the fact that there are, their lives are also so public, I mean, this is not something that you can walk back from, like there's a stain. Um, and I feel a lot of stress, I feel bitterness, I, I feel a lot of hurt in his energy, a lot. It's it's so strange though because the reason Megan cut him off is literally for doing exactly what Megan and Harry have been doing for the last three years to the royal family. Like, will she ever see the irony in that that she cut no. her dad off for oversharing, and that's what they've just been doing on repeat for the last three years? No, um, you know it's it's projection, but no, she doesn't see it. She's in her mind, she's above the, above her family at this point. Oh, I totally believe that. There, she sees them like beneath her. Oof. That's yeah. so sad. That's so sad because she was, she was, her dad gave her everything she has today. He opened so many doors. I think about that sometimes. I was like, her, you know, Megan on General Hospital. Thanks, Dad. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Daddy. Mm -hmm. You know, didn't get the Shakira music video, but you got that General Hospital gig. I wonder how. But she's very selfish. She's very like she's very inward focused. Even though she tries to portray that she's nurturing and all these things, that's 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 false. It's you know, it's not it's a persona. I've had somebody ask me a couple of times what Doria's contribution. I don't know what that means. What do you think? How is Doria Megan's mom? How is she how has she handled the last year of really negative headlines towards her daughter and, and Harry? I don't get a strong of energy from her. And that might because be because her She's energy lying. was I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I I get a fade out energy from her. Um it's kind of weird. I feel like in some ways she's disconnected from it. Mm -hmm. Um I I don't know. Because when I feel into the energy with the father, he feels very distressed and sad. The mother's energy, there's some energy around either we're taking care of on some level or we don't, we're not, we're not involved in that. Like we, we know who, um, we know who we are is kind of the energy that I see. So I don't, I, I don't pick up the same energy. Well, I get, I get, I can see that because I, I can see her being the type of person that doesn't pursue the headlines, that doesn't turn on the TV, doesn't mm -hmm. turn on, doesn't read the gossip sites. So again, just walks the dog, does yoga, call, you know, calls Megan yep. Flower. That very much seems, seems like her. She just tries to stay, to stay above the fray for her own mental health, likely. Um, I, I think she's at a level of comfort that it doesn't matter. And I just feel she's separated from it. She's decided that, you know, she knows who her daughter is and that's that's what it is. And she doesn't need anyone else's opinion. So I, I feel a disconnection from that. Uh, what is your um, intuition when it comes to Eugenie? There are have been a couple of rumors about 
Eugenie's personal life. I haven't seen these yet, but do you get off the bat right off the top of your head? Do you have any? Oh, I don't know. No. <laughs> no. Okay. Is, so but is that what they're is that what they're asking? They're asking if if she's getting a divorce. You don't see that? Oh, interesting. Mm. Shh, guys, don't. Sorry, I have four dogs and they're <laughs> all they're all they're and they're so cute. Um there could be a separation in the future. Okay. There's definitely something going on, but I'm not clear as to what it is. Are people uh, thinking that there's an affair, though? Because I pick up that that's kind of what people are alluding to. I, I haven't seen affair. I've seen could she be getting a divorce? Okay, but the energy around that could be coming out later, potentially. Um, okay. There, it does. I do feel like that. That that is. I will. I'll say seventy-five percent. And for those of us who think it's horrible that we're asking this question, Fergie loves astrologers. Okay, Fergie <laughs> loves astrologers. Fergie introduced Diana to um, uh, plenty of her astrologers. So we're in Fergie space right now, everyone. Um, I have been speaking of Fergie. I have been surprised by the lack of trouble she's gotten into based on her personal relationship with Jeffrey Epstein. He loaned her a significant <sighs> amount of money. Do a do you have any idea how she got away with that? How did she? How was she able to distance herself so much from the from the Epstein scandal? And b is she done? Or on January first, might she find herself thrown right back into the mix? Mm, no, I don't see that touching her with a ten foot pole. Wow. She it, look. She's paid her dues. She's had her karma. She knows who this who who this man is. I feel like she's, you know, she. All right, I'm going to say something really controversial. Okay, well, don't get me kicked off YouTube, please. But okay. Alle allegedly, allegedly, I feel, I feel it's not fact that she has given information that has. Um, brought him out into the light for some of the things that he's done. Oh, so maybe her, it's like, like, what do you call that when you, uh, I, I'm, how am I spacing on this? I'm a Dateline NBC queen. Um, <laughs> when you, when, uh, I, when you give information, it gets kind of gets you out of trouble. Like, in exchange. yes, I feel like there's a protection around her and she is not going to get involved outwardly. And I think that there may be some, Things that exchange hands, money potentially, allegedly. Well, um, it's always money with Fergie for God bless her. We love her. We love yeah, her. Yeah, I mean her. that's always that's, a fake chic somewhere. <laughs> I mean that's the energy that I pick up. Um, I had uh, someone ask the question if you felt like anything might be breaking for William and Catherine over the next year. Kind of sounds like a no. quiet year for Will for William and Catherine as far. As what I've taken from you earlier, sounds like William's doing a lot of, um, William's, uh, well, it sounded like Catherine was heading into some really good work that she was passionate about. And yeah. talk to me about William. Well, I, I feel like William, you know, he's trying to create successful communications here. So there's, there's an important goal here, right? For everybody to get on the same page here, again, with Harry, he is going to be forced into having more conversations that maybe he necessarily doesn't want to have. There is a fear also I'm picking up, you know, they're very family oriented people just in general. Um, and I, I pick up an energy of he's thinking about like the actual fear, like he's lost his brother on some level, but he really doesn't want to fully lose him. So there, there mm. is fear of being alone on some level. There's energy of trying to stay out of the energy of arguing, trying to create harmony. Um, so he's going to be facing some of his deepest fears, I feel, this year. Um, and there's a lot on his mind, again, when it comes to, to money and to the people. Um, I, he has just a nurturing, fatherly 
protective energy. And she carries some of that same energy too, but obviously motherly. They're both very strong people, but deeply sensitive inside. Um, and I still feel that he's deeply hurt. So there's a lot of energy around that and him trying to move forward and move past this. I think that um, him being open to new ideas and new ways of thinking and continuing to focus on the royal family and their duties and their work. Um, again, I just get a big energy, it's interesting, around Harry. <laughs> He's trying to save his own family, own foundation, reconnect with, with royal family. And on some level too, William and Kate are trying to repair and move forward also. Um, so the focus is, again, it's family, but it's creating balance again. Right, balance and probably boundaries, because I don't know how you bounce mm -hmm. back from such betrayal. It's not gonna be, it's, it's not gonna be overnight. It's going to be a process. It could be business-like at first, Trust is definitely not there. <laughs> um, I, I see a handshake. That's wow. a nod to me. I see a handshake between William and Harry, and I see William kind of has his, his head down a little bit, and he's looking up at Harry with his eyes, and he's thinking, can I trust you? There's Harry's going to have to really prove himself. Uh, I have a great question I want to ask you from Disfan9212. If Harry and Meghan are to separate, which if you were listening early, Emily does predict that there will be a separation in the future. Mm -hmm. She said Harry's going to fight tooth and nail to save this relationship. Uh, but Emily does pr predict an inevitable separation between Harry and Meghan. Disfan wants to know, do you think popularity wise people will side with Megan or people will side with Harry if there is a separation between Harry and Megan? I think that the UK will embrace Harry back. Really? Um, yeah. On some level, I, I think that when he, that there will be a softening. Um, I also see that part, there's going to be, there's going to be people who, who soften around it. And then there's going to be another percentage of people who, excuse my language, think that he's, you know, not very smart. He's a moron. Right, um, yeah. I don't like to say that, but you know, so <laughs> those will be the two energies. As far as she goes, I still see her having her like fan base, um, her intense fan base, and then they're gonna support her as being like this, this queen who is, you know, you know, on, on her own, doing her own thing. It, it'll shift to that. Um, they're gonna look at her as, I feel like some sort of pioneer, pioneer in that way. They already look at her that way, I feel, in the sense that like she could do no wrong. So yeah. I don't see it's that necessarily wild. changing. It's yeah. wild. I mean, I will just literally go through a timeline of things that they've done that's, you know, morally, you know, wrong. The, the, the type of things that I would never do, do to somebody that shares my DNA. And somehow I am just a nasty <sighs> gossip who makes up lies. And I'm like, I'm literally just, I'm saying, Oprah interview on this date, fake car chase on this date. You know, like right. and I'm just literally listing off things that have actually happened. How do you, how are you so delusional that you don't see that, you know, that the steps that they are taking are just, and I know you don't want to be mean, but a lot of it's just sheer stupidity. There was, right. in my view, no strategy, except we're going to make everybody feel so sorry for us. And then, you know, yeah. hopefully they just buy into yeah. everything we're saying. Um he, his yeah. return and all of that energy, I feel, though, in the UK, is it's going to be more quiet. They're not going to allow any more drama. So I, I just feel now the papers, the press might tear him to shreds. But yes. I still feel like, you know, I see, you know, him with his kind of head down, tail between his legs, kind of an energy. And with her, she's going to go off and, and do her thing. And I, I still think she'll have her fan base, but there are going to be a lot of people that said, oh, I knew it. I knew it. 
Right, right. Um, I we haven't talked about this in a while. Uh, Jennifer asking us about Samantha's libel court case. Uh, oh, Deandra yeah. asking the same about <sighs> Samantha's libel court case. So there were it was incorrectly reported, uh, I think in March, that this case was tossed out. That's not what happened. What was tossed out was Megan's contribution to finding freedom because the judge said that Megan did not um, personally contact Omid Scobie, didn't personally deliver that information to Omid Scobie. So it should not be held against her because Megan Omid Scobie, uh, or Megan was not the publisher of that content. Omid Scobie, through a third party, received the information that him and his publisher published about Samantha. So what the judge said could go through was the Oprah Winfrey interview, because that is Megan in her own words, and the Harry and Megan Netflix docuseries, because that was Harry and Megan in their own words, produced by Harry and Megan's Archwell. Um, you know, uh, financially, Samantha is looking to be compensated. However, it's my personal opinion that she just wants to clear her name. Um, mm -hmm. what it's not about the money. I, I don't yeah. feel like it's about the money. It's about the principle of it. This thing just feels like it's going to drag on. Um, I, 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 I think I said before there could be a settlement behind the scenes, but I see that Megan like digging in her heels. Um, and I don't feel that it is around the money though. She wants to prove that, you know, this is not who she is and that the things that were said were, were not true or incorrect. Um, because on some level it's, I, I feel from what I pick up from her, it has devastated her life. So Hmm. Um, I, I can't imagine all of a sudden you have all of this attention on you. And this was the, I know that when it comes to attention you didn't ask for, yeah, I know when it comes to a legal case, it's not about feelings. And I get emotional when I talk about this. But no one protected Megan's family. And 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 Megan knowing the type of, t of attention that surprised her that she received, although we still, you know, who knows who contacted the 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 press. Some say it was someone in uh, Beatrice's camp, who knows. But we don't know who contacted the press to tell them to break down the fact that Harry now had this new girlfriend who is an actress named Meghan Markle living in Canada, although it was convenient timing. Um, but, you know, Meghan being surprised by the amount of attention that she received, they had to know that Meghan's family was going to receive an ungodly amount of attention, especially leading up to the wedding. There was no preparation. There was no tip sheet sent to each individual saying, here are some things you might, ex we sh you might want to expect here's how to avoid them, here's how to respond, here's how to react. Um, so I really sympathize with her in that in that way because not only did she not know how to handle all the attention that was on her, but then someone started leaking negative and perhaps untrue things about her. So when, and, and I do believe it was to, uh, to jeopardize her credibility so that people would put her on television less or be uh, less likely to listen to her if she talked about her literal half sister, this person she did grow up with. Um, and so, of course, I'd like to see her vindicated. But Megan's intention was to poison that energy, though. That was her intention all along. Yeah. And so you do you believe that it's maybe Megan's team saying, look, we could make this all go away and we can make her sign an NDA if we mm -hmm. just gave her, a, you know, a handful of cash. And it's Megan mm -hmm. going, that's not the route I want to go. Yes. So I, I think I said before, I felt like there would be talks behind the scenes for a settlement. But I, I Megan does not want to be wrong. She does not want to be viewed as a liar. So she is digging her heels in but mm. for her sister it's absolutely not about the money this has ruined her life on some level right yeah i mean it had to have ruined her life professionally and her mental health because she also yes. talks about being harassed online mm -hmm. absolutely this woman um allegedly has thought about unaliving herself i mean it's, it's gotten really bad and, sorry, hold on. I'm going to.
while I while I wait for my dogs to settle down, um, can you can you do you have a prediction about how the court the court case will uh, unfold? Will there be I any feel, sort of success for Samantha? I feel like it's going to drag out, and there might be some loopholes. Uh, this this my original prediction was the offering behind the scenes, but I I can't see an outcome at this time because it just feels like it drags on and on. And the thing is, is that Megan, her whole part of their strategy, which is not uncommon with um, court cases, is to have her, you know, be destitute and run out of money and to stop um, pursuing this. But there's an energy where I don't feel like either of them are going to give in just yet. I, I don't see that yet. So I can't. I can't say. Um, I I don't see an outcome just yet. And court cases are notoriously difficult to predict um, because there are so many people involved and the energy can change. I will say though that her her sister, like this process alone, the fact that she's even hanging on and continuing is uh, very, very, very emotionally draining and taxing. For Megan, it feels more like, oh, it's just another, it's another thing that I have to worry about and deal with. But it's not, it's not as prevalent in her energy as it is in her sisters. Can you go into some of your Epstein predictions? Because we are, uh, we do have some people asking in the chat about what you might see um, for the Epstein. Uh, well, there's a, well now we know we've got the new release coming in a few days. It, it doesn't have to be royal related. Obviously, it would be great if it sure. is. Well, yeah. I can't, I can't give you people's names for legal reasons. Uh, if you follow me, I had put out some coded things in my stories at the end of last year and let people see if they could figure out who they were. There, I will say this, <laughs> there are people in every industry that you can imagine. You're gonna see a lot of people that are you know, in Hollywood. There is going to be an individual that has actually moved out of Hollywood. I cannot say this person's name. Um, some of these people are going to be very shocking in the way that they might be people that you loved and grew up with thinking that they were a good person. Oh. Um, I, Wait, I, 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 I think I know who's some of the, some of the names I think I've, I've seen potentially could be on the list. And so when you just said you loved and you thought they were a good person, I'm like, Oh, uh -huh. I, I just, I just yeah. saw that person's face in my head. And and some of these people have left the country already, like a year ago, to wow. get ahead of this. So wow. um, you're going to see a lot of people exposed. I mean, this whole year, I predicted at the end of last year that we were going to see a lot come out around trafficking, um, around people in the music industry, and in Hollywood, that Hollywood would start to crumble on some level through, uh, you know, all of these horrible details uh, exposing people for all of the horrible things that they've done, but it's going to continue through 2024 and you're going to see some stuff come out. Uh, we've already seen in the headlines. I won't say his name, but you know, there are certain people that have been in the music industry. Um, there's going to be more energy around this person that comes out. They feel through to next spring. And I, I will just say this, it is so dark. This is really dark stuff, um, but any illusions that we've had around these people, it's it's going to be shattered. So all of said, the truths are coming out. When you said music industry, like three different people mm -hmm. came up, that's how bad it's gotten lately. Mm -hmm. Oof, like, yeah, but oh. there are going to be other people that step forward behind the scenes who were mentored or were involved with these people. And... Um, this stuff goes really deep and really far. It, it hits politicians, it hits um, corporations, it hits um, people across seas. It's, um, you know, of course it's all about money, right? But trafficking is one of the, the big sources of, um, of money makers with these people and obviously the power and control. But the people that you're seeing exposed their next tier. We saw, you know, R. Kelly went to prison. I predicted that he 
is a part of a lot of that stuff, but he's low level. Now you're going to see the next tier and then you're going to see the next tier. So all these people are being thrown under the bus. They're getting rid of them. They are exposing them. And so you're seeing all these people, they're going at each other behind the scenes. That's why this is all coming out because the people at the very, very top, they want to continue to protect their facade. Okay. I just realized who you were probably talking about again when, okay. I don't want to say names, but I think who you were just referencing in the music industry is who I worked for, for a brief period of time. And now yes, it's yes. coming together. So, uh, cause that, cause like I said, we've seen so many different names. I'll just, you don't have to say anything, but just going over the list of names we saw strictly because that, um, because that, um, it expired in New York. The statue of limitations expired in New York. Uh, and so we, it was like, there was a date set around it. So all of a sudden we saw all of these musicians getting accused of things because women wanted to make sure that they got it in before that, uh, that, um, statue expired and we saw P Diddy. We saw, I can't remember the nineties rocker that was accused of something. We saw uh, Steven Tyler has been accused, I believe multiple times over the last year. So a lot of wild names. Um, well, just, even Harvey, Harvey is, was low hanging fruit too. They had to get rid of him. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh. Yes. Somebody's saying P Diddy. Yes. That's, that's, uh, Good, good guess. I was actually thinking Steven Tyler when you originally said that. And then I was, it all came together towards the end. And I was like, no, I don't think that's what she's referencing now that she's given a little bit more detail. Um, it's going to be more than that though. You'll see there there's, uh, I can't say it. I can't say it for legal reasons, but there, a lot of people that are in tune, they already know, they already see. Okay, so a lot of the people that you see that are performing, like the ones that get like the biggest, you know, deals and they're doing all the award shows and, and NFL and all that stuff, just just pay attention. Pay attention. Okay. Oh my gosh, that's scary. That's so scary. Um, all right, so just a quick recap. You think, well, I, I'll just re read this quickly. Jakey says, the public are sick of the rich celebs paying to hide things. People are speaking out and will not be silenced anymore. Yes. Okay. I'm going to, I want to ask right. you, I want to ask you something, but I don't want to get in trouble legally. So I'm just going to ask you very vaguely. Is there a very famous movie and television producer that is going to be called out like one of the most, the richest movies and television yes. producers in yes. the world. Yes. And actually um, he has already been exposed on a very low level, but it's still somewhat hush hush, but yes. Okay. okay. Oh my goodness. That's make, that makes me sad. Yeah. It's, okay. it's, it's, it hits you in your gut, man. It's, it just you know, makes you realize that we we cannot worship people like you cannot. Well, worship yeah, it's it's no different. It, you know, um, the idolization, right? The golden cow, and and it's it's the the allegory um, of the cave. You know, it's it's all the distractive energy of entertainment. It's like the Truman Show. Right. It, there's so much that's going to come out. I mean, this this year was really chaotic. Next year, though, I do feel that um, people on a personal level are going to have to step up. They're going to have to. You can't just sit and wait for, for life to happen next year. You need to make it happen. You need to step into your power. That's what next year is about. So a quick recap, because I'm going to let you go because you've been so generous with your time. Uh, for Harry and Megan, you see a productive 2024 professionally. Personally, you see you see a little bit of struggle. Is is that correct? Yeah, I mean, there's still going to be issues also professionally. I mean, they're, they're, look, their road is rocky. It is not a simple one. But theirs is not a happy marriage. And you will see more separation in the energy. You will see more, even though they may try to 
project something different. But yes, they are going to be working on certain projects. So yeah, it's 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 not going to be all roses and sunshine. And then with William and Catherine, you, it, it sounds kind of like you've said that William is working on moving forward and escaping the drama. And Catherine's uh, is already, she's done with it. She's done with it. She's going to focus yeah. on some of her charitable initiatives. Yeah. So sh she's already stepped into her new energy. So it's like a breath of fresh air. She's okay. made a decision mentally and emotionally. And I just feel she swept a lot of things out. His more so comes in the summer but he is moving into a whole new cycle as well. Okay, and um, what what would you say about the King and Camilla based on um, based on your, what you've seen looking at uh, their charts? I, I, I think it's gonna be the same. I, again, I don't see like over the top major excitement i mean again there there will be people that are accepting of it but i just feel that the the younger generations they just don't care for it is more the energy it does seem like they are happy right i mean to to, to find out yeah that, they're that they're happy camilla's invite you know finally getting to it to include her children in their christmases it mm -hmm. seems like they're in a really nice place and he's probably a, a little bit more comfortable with the fact that he's making the decisions today. It, do, do you get that sense? Yeah, the energy is more calm, I feel. I feel like it was very hectic and, you know, uh, there was a lot of fear going on. Um, so I, I do feel that, yes. All right, and I, I'm sorry I forgot to ask this question, but I, I thought it was a good one. Uh, I apologize for not taking their name down, but someone asked, why do you feel like not a lot of people from Megan's past talk? You know, Trevor, uh, why hasn't Trevor written a book, her ex-husband? Why do people not talk that know Megan and, and knew her before Harry? Because she put the hammer down. I, I feel that she went to some of these people or had a liaison go to some of these people and say, look, if you da 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 da, think there were either NDA sign or there was energy letting people know people don't want to get involved or they're scared um let's just say that her ex-husband he knows her very well mm -hmm. and he is not interested in going down that road again well you know because he had a he had a he created a television show about a guy who's wife leaves him for a prince and it was like sold to fox or something and then that mm -hmm. that show just disappeared well she's gonna leave the prince for somebody else so allegedly <laughs> that sounds like an even better hbo drama <laughs> succession style that hey, was look, like there's there's a lot of hurt there but i i don't I, again i i don't allegedly i don't want to say that she threatens people but there is definitely the people that know like really like know her on some level they're 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 not going to get involved yeah, because there probably just might be a um, a fear, a fear because they've seen yeah. something else. I mean, they're very litigious people, so there might just be like that fear that just exists. Well, and she's, what's the best word to say it? I don't want to say manipulative, but. It's scaring me, girl. But she's, you know, she she plays chess, not checkers. So, oh, really? I think that, is that no, no, no. Um, Bethany Frankel says she plays she plays checkers, not chess. <laughs> she talks about, <laughs> when she talks no, about I, how I, I, she, she may outwardly like make some really bad decisions, but she's has. When I say that, I mean that she has long term plans in the sense that she's making certain moves for long term in the future. It, whether or not their good moves is, you know, another thing. But okay. I feel like she, I guess my point is she has no problem going after anybody through strategy. Okay. All right. That's, that's I mean, good look at know. Oprah. That was a whole strategy of victimization. You know, 100%. I mean, it's, it's step one. Yeah. Right. Did you have any other predictions before I let you go? I think that that's pretty, I think that's pretty much it. We covered a lot of ground there, everything from Epstein to uh, a potential Harry and Meghan separation in the future. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, I obviously don't root for the negative. I don't root for the bad, but I, I sometimes sure. wonder how two people can feel like the entire world is against them and and stay happy, happily together, and 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 just stay in a in a in a content place. Well, they can't. And I mean, truth be told, like she, I really feel that it affects her physical health. Yeah. Greatly. Well, we don't. I hate to hear that. That makes me sad. Um, because. That's got to be hard. Yeah, I can't. I can't imagine. It's you know you you don't, you don't ever want to wish ill upon people. When I make these right. predictions, it's not because I want something to happen to someone ever. Absolutely not. It's the opposite. It's just what I see. All right, one more question. And I'm gonna let you go because that's my game. I say <laughs> I say one more question, and then I ask ten more. Um, sure. Terry wants to know if you ever see. Uh, Ter Terry and Edie want to know if you ever see. Uh, Harry's children becoming working or valuable members of the royal family, or will they always have this separation, you know, uh, uh, across the pond? Um, I do feel like one of the children may want to have some sort of impact. Okay. But it's going to be dependent on the influence of mom. Oh, well, of course she's going to say yes. But Get I do there. feel that the that the son, uh, is it Archie? Yes. I do feel that Archie may have an interest in making an impact um, at some point. But I also feel some energy around finance, around creativity, around other things. But I do think that there potentially could be an interest. Okay. Well, that's an interesting answer. All right. I love it. I love it. Well, Emily, thank you so much for spending uh, your holiday with us. And um, I had so much fun talking to you and catching up on all things royal. Well, thank you so much for having me again. And it's so nice to be here. I hope everybody has a wonderful holiday. Right. And happy, happy, happy new year. All right. I'll talk to you soon, Emily. Bye, everyone. Thanks, everybody that tuned in. Bye. Take care.